Last night saw the return of Brett Pesci to the Carolina Hurricanes lineup. However, it was not enough for them to take the win from the Dallas Stars. Find out what went wrong and why mistakes were so costly in that game in this episode of Locked on Hurricanes. Your Locked on Hurricanes. Your daily podcast on the Carolina Hurricanes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Kaniacs. I'm your host, Jared Ellis, and you're listening to Locked On Hurricanes on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And as always, thank you for making Locked On Hurricanes your first listen of this Wednesday evening and today's episode is brought to you by the lovely folks over at game time download the game time app create an account and use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase now last night big thing heading into that game is whether or not we would see Brett Pesci return to the lineup for the Hurricanes he did travel with the team for this road trip whereas guy like auntie ronza did not so that was definitely looking good uh for me uh and he had obviously been out uh for the past couple games due to illness probably got the bug that's been going around raleigh uh nothing too crazy there um but it was not enough for them to take the win from the dallas stars as they lost that game four to two and it wasn't that this game was all bad. Um, the Hurricanes definitely uh, did some stuff right. Um, uh, they played an overall very clean game, uh, only getting called for one penalty. Both teams actually played very clean games, both only getting called for one penalty. The Hurricanes alone penalty uh, was one Um committed by Dmitry Orlov. Um, and thankfully, you know, Hurricane's penalty kill came up big as uh, it usually does, which is good. And then both goalies, uh, Kochekov and Ottinger, both played really good games. Both uh, made some really big saves for their teams. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, mistakes are what cost the Hurricanes this game, really. Uh, two of the four Dallas goals uh, came off of turnovers. Um, um, uh, another one of them coming when the Hurricanes were stretched really thin during a line change. Obviously, the fourth you know, being empty net goal um, there at the very end. So, yeah, this was a. I would say a frustrating game. That's uh, what I would use to describe it because it wasn't that the Hurricanes necessarily played uh, a really bad game, you know, where it's just one of those where you know it's over before it's over. And, you know, it. Yeah, this is one where it at times did feel like the Hurricanes could win this game. Um and it felt like at times, you know, they had chances. Uh, and that was another thing, you know, with this game, you know, both teams had good chances. And Dallas, you know, again, just took advantage of the Hurricanes' mistakes. And, you know, they are the ones that came away with the win. Uh, they capitalized on those mistakes in the neutral zone. And, you know, with that you were talking about Brett Pesci coming back into the lineup. That first goal came off of a Brett Pesci turnover in the neutral zone. And, you know, going into this game, you knew it was going to be a tough game. Dallas has really been rolling. Uh, they are, you know, have been a really good team. We talked yesterday about how the Hurricanes really need to play a tight, suffocating game to stifle uh the Dallas offense um but at the end of the day it, you know it wasn't enough uh but yeah you know, again I do want to stress 
So it wasn't like the Hurricanes got their butts kicked or anything like that. No, they they, they did things right in this game. Um, I think yeah, the they came out uh, with um, some good energy. The Hurricanes, they actually got the first scoring chance of the game, um, which is something that I did like uh, because I said, you know, they were going to have to really get after it in this game. Um, but again, you know, just what they had, you know, just wasn't enough. Um, it One interesting thing about this uh, game just as a whole, you know, whoever won or lost was the fact that and I didn't mention this yesterday was that these teams play each other again uh, in just a few days on February 25th uh, here in Raleigh. So that'll be interesting to see how that will go. Um, it being so uh, quick uh, or such a quick turnaround um, in this season series last year, the hurricane swept it um, this year. Best I can do is tie it. <laughs> um, so that'll be interesting to see you know, if there is any carryover, um, you know, hurricanes, maybe to look, uh, kind of get that win back. Um, it being so close. And again, you know, the mistakes being kind of what cost them in, in this game, but all that being said, you know, again, it's not like it was a bad game. There's stuff, you know, to build off of here. Um, one thing that was echoed on the broadcast was, you know, how they are going into uh back to back over the weekend against Arizona and Vegas, how goaltending stuff will get uh split up over there. But again, I don't think this is a game you know for the Hurricanes to be ashamed of. Uh Pyotr Kochekov, yeah, you know, yeah, sucks. Uh, you know, him coming off of the performance he had, uh, you know, being you know, going from you know allowing two goals uh, so quickly in that Colorado game, coming back in relief, not uh, allowing anything, uh, then pitching a shutout, um, and then going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jake Ottinger, you know, who was an all-star this year. Um, I don't think you know, he really has anything to be ashamed of. He was also named one of the NHL's goalies of the week as well for this uh, past week. So, yeah, you know, he's playing really good hockey. So, yeah, there's stuff for them to continue to build off of. You figure, yeah, you know, with the way, you know, the Dallas Coyotes and Golden Knights have been playing at home this year. This was something we mentioned yesterday, just how strong those teams all have been in their respective uh, home arenas. Kind of figure they Hurricanes weren't going to win all of these uh, road games. Um they're definitely yeah, probably going to take a L in w at least one of them. So big thing is, you know, wanting them to be able to turn things around going into the next game. But like I said, there's a lot to dissect with this game. Um, yeah, you know, because again, they did have some good things here. Uh, and we will dive into the game right after this quick break, folks. Now, folks, it is starting to get warm uh, out, and before you know it, outdoor shows are going to be happening. And if you're wanting to go to one of these outdoor shows, Game Time has got you covered. Folks, if you've been around for a long time, you know we've been talking about Game Time for a while now, and you shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets for your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all of the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. They have you know, flash deals, zone deals. They're the best ways to find tickets last minute because, again, sometimes you don't know if you're going to be have a day off from work and turns out you do. You want to go to this particular show, Going on, Game Time has you covered. My favorite thing about them is the views from your seat. You don't get surprised by an obstructive view because no one ever likes that, folks. I know I when I've used Game Time, I love going around looking at different views from the seat. So I know exactly 
what I'll be getting, folks. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On. That's L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Now, folks, like I said, lot to dissect with this game. Uh, one thing I mentioned earlier was that uh, both teams definitely uh, had good chances uh, throughout this game. That was especially uh, notable in the first period. But Dallas, again, just kind of felt like they had the edge on that. Um, one thing yeah, that I did have noted for the Hurricanes was, uh, especially in the first period, just being too passive on offense. We've seen that before um, of them just not uh, just just not shooting uh, and literally being too passive, trying to pass too much, throwing in the extra pass that uh, didn't need to be there. Um, and these are just kind of things that we've talked about forever with this team. You know, not just this year. It's been something that's been going on for years now. And still an issue. Uh, that's why, you know, we keep kind of harping on the Hurricanes that need to go out and get a guy or two that have that shoot first mentality. Um, not, not that there's anything wrong with uh, being a pass first kind of uh, mentality, having that, having that mentality. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but when all of your guys are like that, then that's not necessarily uh, going to get you the win every single time. Uh, because again, we've seen that for years, like I said, uh, for that first Dallas goal turnover uh, by Brett Pesci in the neutral zone uh, and just loose play all over in, in the neutral zone really led to that Dallas goal. Uh, um, again, Pyotr Kochekov making uh, really good saves throughout the game. Uh, you know, one thing I really liked uh, heading into the second period, uh, or, well, basically heading into it, uh, 13 seconds in, Jordan Stahl tying it up for the Hurricanes. I really, really liked that. That was the kind of pressure that I felt they were needing. Uh, you know, just, and that energy, you know, again, you know, they had the first scoring chance of the game. Uh, there in the first, but again, Dallas coming away with it. Um, and, you know, one thing, you know, with that um, Jordan Stahl goal uh, that was mentioned on the broadcast uh, was how they took advantage of Dallas's poor play in the neutral zone that ended up leading to that Stahl goal. Um, so it wasn't like it was just the Hurricanes making that mistake. Uh, it was Dallas making it. As, as well. And then, like I said, the uh, third or second stars goal uh, being when they took advantage of uh, the hurricanes being stretched really thin during a line change. You know, that's just kind of that situational awareness uh, that Dallas had there. They realized, oh, hey, you know, they're stretched, they're short, um, you know, they're changing. Let's take advantage of that. And that's exactly. Uh, what they did and then of course they're in the third period that's uh like i said uh, also yes for fast uh or excuse me uh jordan stall uh and so and it, wait who who the heck even scored that goal <laughs> it was yes for fast uh got credited for the hurricane's second goal uh, whereas Jordan Martin, like he bounced it off of his skate. Uh, here are my notes. It threw me off for a second the way I had it wrote down. Um, but yeah, you know, going into that third period did feel like it was one that could go either way. Um, like I said, you know, with this game, these two teams are going blow for blow, um, or especially Ottinger and Kochekov. Um, so going into that third period is definitely you know, whoever could win that period definitely would win the game, but it obviously ended up uh, being uh, Dallas uh, again coming off of 
a line change. Uh, Jason Robertson uh, kind of took advantage uh, of that there in the middle part of the period. And, you know, Brett Pesci, um, you know, was on the wrong end of a two-on-one. And then that put the stars up, uh, unfortunately. And then, of course, Matt Duchesne uh, got empty net there at the end. Um, so, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it was one that was definitely very frustrating. Again, uh, just little tiny mistakes uh, that I think the Hurricanes – uh, need to clean up and i i look at this game again a, a, as a building block uh kind of game again it's not like they played a bad game or anything it was those mistakes um that cost them here uh and i think this is a game you can go back and you know look review that film you know it will just you know for example um you know, that first goal, uh, that loose play in the neutral zone, the Pesci turnover, uh, look at that and work on that kind of thing, you know, because Dallas, they're obviously going to be a playoff team this year. And, you know, you can use this as a way to work on these mistakes and look at that stuff. And as I said, they also play Dallas again in just a few days on the 25th. So, there's a lot to work on uh, and build off of here and get better from. That's kind of that's really how I look at this game. This is a game that they can build off of and get better from. So, you know, heading into Arizona, uh, heading into Vegas and everything after that, you know, work on the mistakes that they made here. Um, but at the end of the day, if we just got to wait for those games to uh, come up. We got to wait. Anyway, we just got to wait for it. Um, but, you know, the Hurricanes, yeah, they do have, they did have some good performers in this game. And I do want to talk about the Hurricane stars of the game, as well as what is next for the Hurricanes uh, coming up right after this quick break, folks. Now, the wait is almost over North Carolina. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, is coming to our state. On March 11th, you'll finally be able to bet on all of your favorite teams in all of your favorite sports, whether it's the Hurricanes, the Hornets, the Panthers, whatever FanDuel has got us covered. And with FanDuel, there's tons of ways for you to get in on the action. You can bet on everything from the money line to over-unders to which scheme team will win this year's tobacco road rivalry all on an app that's safe secure and super easy to use plus with live betting you can even pick which player will put up the next bucket and the one after that see for yourself why FanDuel is America's number one sports book just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on so you can be the first to know when FanDuel goes live here in North Carolina that's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Now, diving into the Hurricanes stars of the game. Really, the big one here um, is Jordan Stahl. Um, he was the uh, official third star of the game. Um, and he's my first star for the Hurricanes in this game having a goal and an assist like i said you know his goal i think it was uh something really good for the hurricanes coming uh 13 seconds into that second period how they played well uh took advantage uh of dallas mistakes there in the neutral zone uh and he's my first star of the game uh in two point night and then you know speaking of two point nights uh my second star of the game is Jordan Martinuk having two assists on the night? Um, assists on that stall goal, and like I said, the uh, him shooting the puck, it going off of uh, Jesper Foss skate, and then into the net, and that's really kind of where it ends uh, for me personally. I think third star, you know, I mean, you could say Jesper Foss, yeah, he had a goal. Uh, Dmitry Orlov, also another guy that. Played a good game. Uh, he was the one that got called for the penalty. 
Um, you know, he had the highest uh, plus minus rating. If you're into that kind of thing uh, for the Hurricanes all night, he had a plus two on the night. Uh, I know plus minus is kind of eh, one of those weird stats. Um, but, you know, that some people, you know, put uh, a lot of credibility into. Some people don't. Um, but again, he had the highest one of the night. Uh, so it felt it was worth mentioning there. Um, but yeah, it, again, Stahl and Martinuk, those are the Hurricanes' top two guys from the night. Uh, and we've seen that before uh, of you know, those guys, that line in general, being uh, one that you know, the Hurricanes can really rely on to get things done. That was kind of one thing they were doing tonight of really relying on that line. So, you know, again, there's things to build off of with this game. Uh, but again, mistakes are what cost them uh, here in tonight's game or in that game. Uh, but and that was something that, you know, everyone, you know, in post game was kind of echoing. Uh, Brendan Moore you know, was asked on what he thought the difference was in that game, uh, saying, quote, we gave up breakaways. A couple of unfortunate bounces in the neutral zone led to them getting odd man rushes and they capitalized. We had some odd man rushes in the first period and we passed it, passed it, passed it instead of firing at the net. That put us behind the eight ball. Overall, I thought we had a really good game. We were doing a lot of really good things. Ottinger made some really great saves down there, including the one on Pesh with a chance to tie it up. The bounces weren't going our way tonight, end quote. Stuff we talked about all episode tonight. Um Poor play in the neutral zone, um, not getting the bounces, them doing things right, and then just passing, passing, passing. That has really got to be something they need to work on. Um, and unfortunately, I don't think it's going to really change. I don't because it's been that way for years now. Um, you know, they've... They've been this way for years uh, of having these games where they just pass, pass, pass. Every guy has that pass first mentality. And it just happens. Uh, I Ultimately, until they get a guy that has a shoot first mentality, I don't think that's really going to change. I think it's always going to be a potential issue for the team of them just wanting to pass and pass and pass, and no one's going to be the selfish guy to just shoot it. To just shoot it. Uh, I And like I just don't think it's going to change anytime soon because they haven't shown us that it will, unfortunately. Uh, Jordan Stahl, uh, this is what he had to say. Um, he said, quote, it was a good game. It could have gone either way. We made a few mistakes, and they made us pay. They did a good job of capitalizing on their opportunities. We were working for some breaks, and they had some looks to tie it up but came short. It wasn't a terrible game. It wasn't our best. There were some mistakes out there. We gave them a few. The first one was a tough one for me too, but it was a good battle and a good game. We've got to find a way to get points. End quote. Yes, Rafas kind of said the same thing. Overall, quote, overall, I think we played a decent game. It was a very tight game out there. Small details went in their favor. We just have to reload and get ready for the next game, end quote. So, yeah, again, you know, a lot of the same the same thing we've said already today. It wasn't a terrible game. You know, did some things right. Dallas took advantage of mistakes, you know, and it, it is what it is. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, I just want them to use this game as one where they can build off of. Uh, and, you know, heading into this, these games against Arizona, against Vegas, I want to see them clean up their play in the neutral zone. That's a big thing going forward in these next few games uh, is tightening up their play in the neutral zone in those mistakes. Uh, if they can do that, then, yeah, I think yeah, they're going to be they're going to be all right. Uh, yeah, and that's the thing. Yeah, we, even with this game, this team is going to be all right. I think this is just a little tiny speed bump. Um, 
you know, going, you know, down the second half of the season. I don't see this as a, you know, a world is a melting uh, type game or anything like that. Like, and they had, it, they played a good game. It was these mistakes that ended up costing them. Um, but like I said, you know, they just got to move on to the next game. Uh, the Hurricanes were off today, traveling to Arizona tomorrow. Uh, they are scheduled to practice there at Mullet Arena. Um, and then on Friday uh, is when they take on the Coyotes and then turning right back around taking on the Vegas Golden Knights on Saturday. Um, as uh, I said before, uh, at the beginning of the week, I do think that um, we are going to see Spencer Martin uh, play in at least one of these games. I said uh, we'll see Martin Friday against Arizona and then Kochekov back on uh, Saturday against Vegas. That was something that uh, Mike and Tripp kind of echoed on the broadcast as well. In them thinking that's what's going to happen, I think that's a smart move. Go check off is your better hand. Um, you kind of want him to be there for the better team. So, you know, but at the end of the day, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. Uh, so we're just on to Arizona. We're just going to put this game in the rearview mirror. We're not going to get too upset about it. We're going to use it as building block. We're going to get better at uh, play in the neutral zone. We're going to uh, be a little bit more selfish when it comes to shooting the puck. Fingers crossed on that one. And then we're going to get the win against Arizona. We're going to get the win against Vegas, folks. That's what the Hurricanes are going to do. At least I hope so. <laughs> uh, so make sure you are following the show along on Twitter uh, at LO underscore Hurricanes. Myself at Jared Ellis underscore 96. Subscribe on YouTube, folks. And as always, thank you for making Locked on Hurricanes your first listen of this evening. And let's go, Canes.